If you've been watching greenhouse growing lately, you probably noticed something. Tomatoes are where systems either prove themselves or fall apart. And today is one of those greenhouse days that make me ridiculously happy because we're planting tomatoes for 2026 season, but we're doing it the calm, boring, predictable way that actually works. Not a couple of plants in a pot. I'm talking hydroponic tomatoes going straight into betel buckets right here at the end of the row that currently has my English cucumbers. Now here's the fun part. This is a planned takeover. I've got more tomato starts coming along in our nursery channel, but they're not quite big enough yet. So we're starting the, at the end of this row today. And in a few weeks when the starts are ready, I'm going to pull these cucumbers and this whole row will become tomatoes set up perfectly for an easy lean and lower trellis. And yes, we're aiming for our first tomato by May of 2026. So let's do it. So if you've never seen my channel before, I'm Katie and this is Homegrown Passion. These are Robolski F1 from Johnny Select Seeds and I picked this variety very intentionally. Robolski is an indeterminate greenhouse slicer bread for protected culture. And Johnny even listed it as a hydroponic performer. It's exactly what we're doing here. Fruit size averages between eight to seven ounces. It's bright red, slightly ribbed, just a clean, beautiful market tomato. It's crack resistant, firm without being hard, so it eats well and handles well. But the real reason I chose it is its disease package. Strong resistance to powdery mildew, leaf mold, fusarium, and TMV. That's me removing problems before they show up, not reacting later. Jenny seeds listed at about 75 days to maturity, so we're stacking the deck. Flavor, looks, and a plant that can actually stay healthy long enough to pay us back. So I've been growing this variety for the past eight years, and my farm market customers all look forward to the day I bring the tomatoes to the market, which is usually the first day since we get them planted so early. And what I like about these tomatoes, when you slice them, they're red all the way through, and they're nice and firm, and they do hold up for a couple weeks on the counter. Today we're planting the biggest, most ready tomato starts into the betel buckets, just at the end section. Then in a few weeks, the second wave of tomatoes in the nursery channel will be ready to up pot, and that's when the cucumbers come out. I started the tomato seeds on December 13th in Rapid Rooters, and look how nice the root system is. Definitely ready to go into the betel bucket. These Rapid Rooters, I've had such good success with them. There's going to be a link down below so you guys can purchase them if you need them. So if you've never done a crop swap like this, this is one of my favorite greenhouse strategies. Keep production going, but start the next crop early so the transition is smooth and not stressful. All right, beto bucket time. Our tomatoes going into perlite today, and I'm gonna show you exactly how I fill these so the plants root fast and the irrigation behaves. So step one, make sure your drain fittings and drain line are ready. If your bucket can't drain properly, you're not doing hydroponics, you're doing stress. Let me get this guy in here. Okay, most tomato failures don't happen at harvest. It happens right here at the bucket. Step two is starting to fill the buckets with perlite. But before I start that, I do put on my respirator and turn on the exhaust fan. That way all the dust is sucked out of the greenhouse so I don't have to breathe it in. And once you dump it in, you don't want to call it good. You want to gently shake the bucket so all the perlite settles without any big air pockets. The perlite that I purchased is in four cubic feet bags. So one bag fills up about nine buckets, give or take how much headroom you leave. Now 
Now that I have the buckets filled up, shake them a little bit, level out the perlite. And remember, if you think it's too full, that's okay because once you water it down, the perlite is gonna settle, so you'll have plenty of room. So what I like to do after a week or two, after the plants have been in and the perlite settles, I'll come in and top it off to get it to the level that I like. Now that the buckets are filled, probably notice my nutrient line is going back and forth. So I'm gonna go grab some twist ties because I do have holes in my betel buckets and I secure it so it stays nice and even. So when I plant the plants and somebody hits it, it doesn't knock everybody over. So I start down here at the end of my twisty ties I cut in half. These, I used to use zip ties, but these seem to work just as good and a lot cheaper. So I just secure the nutrient line to the bucket and it stays in place. I drilled these holes years ago. It was a really good idea. And it makes it look nice and neat also. Before I start planting, I like to use nutrient water to wet down the perlite so then when you put the plant in, it holds it nice and tight. So this nutrient water is pH balanced. It's the same I was using in the nursery. So I put the plants in, there's no shock to them. So I put my seedlings underneath the lights in my Vigo four tier tray and they did really well because they have a seedling light and it really made these guys pop. Look how nice dark green they are. So now it's the fun part. Now we plant. Tomatoes can handle being planted a little deeper than other crops, but in hydro buckets like this, the goal is simple. Roots down, stem stable and plants upright. And then you take the perlite and you pack it around. Not really tight, just snug enough so the plant's secure. So this little guy grew kind of crooked and of course we want them to grow straight. So when I plant them, I'll dig my hole and I'll do a little trench. Because you know how tomatoes like to root and I'm just gonna put his stalk, get a little bit deeper, into the perlite. He'll root down and then grow nice and straight. And here's a small thing that matters more than people realize. You need to position your plants where the betel bobbin strings can come down to them and then you can lean and lower them clockwise. So I have one high tensile wire going on each side of my betel bucket runs here. So as the strings come down, we lean and lower and they keep going around in a big circle. And this is really important because last year, my tomatoes ended up being over 40 feet long when I took them out in the fall. Look how great this plant looks and look how beautiful the roots are. This is the sweet spot where you want to plant them. I like to lay out the plants as I'm going down the line. It just makes it easier if I just squat down, dig my hole and pop the plant in. So here's an example of one of my little bendy tomato plants. He was sitting on top of another rooter and he grew little roots coming out of his stem. This is a drip fed betel system. So each bucket gets time feed and we watch runoffs so salts don't sneak up on us. 
It's a place you grip steak where the water spreads evenly and doesn't tunnel straight down one side, but close enough to wet its root zone, but not blast the stem. I'm using 0.5 gallons per hour admitters. And right now in the winter time, every 30 minutes, the water comes on for one minute. The first watering, don't overthink it. The goal today is fully charge the perlite with nutrient solution so the roots have a uniform environment. Uniform roots make calm plants, calm plants make tomatoes. And yes, we're still sharing this row with the cucumber plants for now, but once they come out, this row shifts into tomato optimized rhythm. Now let's talk training because tomatoes are sweet until they're not managed. Rabolski is an indeterminate, so it keeps growing and producing. Last year, our tomato plants were over 40 feet long. We'll run these on a high wire and go lean and lower once the whole row is tomatoes. So I do want to talk a little bit about pruning, even though these plants aren't ready. So from day one, choose one main leader. Clip early so the plant learns that up is the default direction. Remove suckers and keep the air full clean. If you don't decide how the plant grows, it'll decide for you and it's usually messy. Quick chemistry moment, because hydroponics is simple if you stay consistent. For greenhouse tomatoes and aggregate media, a target nutrient solution pH is 5.8. This keeps the nutrients available and voids deficiencies, which aren't really deficiencies, they're lockout. We don't just check out what we feed, we check out what comes out. Runoff tells us to salt or building or drifting, so the routine is check feed, check runoff, adjust calmly, no panic swings. Because tomatoes, they reward stability more than they reward perfection. So that's the start of our 2026 hydroponic tomato roll. Rabolski and perlite in betel buckets with the cucumbers about to hand over the keys. We're aiming for the first tomatoes by May of 2026 and we'll keep you posted as we pull the cucumber plants, drop the next wave of tomato starts from the nursery channel and convert this entire row into a clean, lean and lower system. This is how we turn a long tomato season into a predictable one without burnout. If you want to follow the full tomato series from planting to pruning to heavy fruit load, make sure you're subscribed. Once these vines takes off, it gets real fun in here. All right, let's get these babies comfy. I need to go turn on the water timer. But in the meantime, please leave me any questions, comments, or suggestions down below. And I'll see you guys next video.